Uh, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am an assistant professor in quantitative psychology at ASU, and my lab is the Experimental Design and Methods Lab. Uh, one of my areas of research is in sample size planning and power analysis. And so when we do a psychological study, we often have an effect that we would like to detect, uh, but there's a lot of noise and error in using real data. And so we need a sample size that's appropriate to be able to detect the effect that we are aiming or hypothesizing to detect. And so some of my work is in developing methods that researchers can use to determine the appropriate sample size for their study and the effect that they are looking to detect. Uh, one thing that I'm always aiming to do in my research is to develop methods that are practical uh, to be implemented by researchers in other disciplines. So I try to build a bridge between quantitative psychology and other areas of psychology so that the methods and software I develop can be user-friendly um, and can be actually implemented by researchers in their work. Uh, so psychology has come under fire recently uh, due to several highly publicized failures to replicate studies. Uh, it's been called the replication, replication crisis or a crisis of confidence. And so what a lot of my work aims to do is uh, consider factors that might have led to this replication crisis um, and determine what researchers can do to make their studies more trustworthy and more replicable. And so one of the factors that I noticed was the small sample sizes in psychology. Now, when researchers were trying to replicate these small sample size studies, uh, even if these new researchers had enough statistical power for their study, the statistical power of the previous study um, impacted their ability to get a successful replication. Um, and so there's a lot of things that researchers can fairly easily change to make their studies uh, more replicable um, as we move forward. One way that a lot of researchers determine uh, the sample size they need is by using a effect size that has been reported in a previously published study. And I've developed a method that allows researchers to adjust these effect sizes for publication bias. And that way the effect size they're using to estimate the sample size that they need in their study will be the appropriate effect size and then lead to the appropriate sample size. And so researchers can use software that I've developed to easily implement this method to have a more powerful study that hopefully will be able to be replicated by uh, other researchers.